this video we are going to discuss about the terminology related to labor so here first we'll discuss about lie so what is lie lie is a relationships between between longitudinal axis of fetus and longitudinal axis of mother so let me explain this for example this is mother okay for example just this is a mother so in the mother this is called as longitudinal axis okay so baby is here let us draw a small baby okay so in the baby the same middle line that is the longitudinal axis of the baby so what is lie lie means it is a relationship between the long axis of the mother and the long axis of the fetus okay uh, so this is that is uh, maternal spine or centralized uterus or uh, you can also say it as maternal spine because according to maternal spine the lie of the fetus is present and it is a centralized uterus right because the uterus is now in the center of the abdomen okay so this lie is divided into three types the first one is longitudinal lie so longitudinal lie is will be like this only as i drawn just now okay next coming to transverse lie so let me draw a diagram for this for example this is female abdomen so the baby is like this this is the head of the baby so this is called as transverse like you can see it is transverse right now coming to another one that is called as oblique lie lie nothing but how the baby is lying in the abdomen that's it so if you draw an oblique lie the baby is like this here the head of the baby is like this so if you draw a line you will clearly understand you can see this is transverse this is oblique lie this is longitudinal lie so these are the three types of lies in respect with the mother now coming to unstable lie what is unstable lie let us understand so unstable lie is when lie of the fetus is not fixed by 37 weeks the mother has come uh, to that 37 weeks of gestation but still the fetus position is not fetus lie is not fixed till now so this type is called as unstable that's why it's unstable okay so what are the causes for this unstable lie why is still the position we are not able to find out or why still the fetus has not come to the position the most common cause is idiopathic we don't know it is a idiopathic cause and following it you can see some other causes like in the case of polyhydroaminos you know because of more fluid the lie may keep changing and due to placenta previa and coming to abnormal shape of pelvis so these are the different reasons why the lie is still unstable even at the 37 week note that oligohydroaminose doesn't lead to unstable lie okay only polyhydroaminose and uterine malformation doesn't lead to unstable lie. and this is very important this both oligo doesn't lead to unstable lie and even the uterine malformations okay they will not lead to unstable lie so what is the management for this cases of unstable lie just you will do the caesarean section why because we are unable to see still the position of the baby in the mother so it's better to do caesarean section in unstable lie now coming to presentation so what is presentation presentation it is a part of the fetus which occupy the lower part of uterus so the fetus is in the lower part for example let us draw the uterus so normally fetus will be like this right so like this right so this is a presentation okay so presentation if you see in the longitudinal line this is a cephalic presentation means head is first so that's why this is a cephalic presentation okay and you have a breech presentation in breech presentation what is the problem is the buttocks of the baby will be here the body will be here and the head is here head of the baby is here so as the head is here this is a breech position this is a cephalic position okay so the most common presentation because uh, the cephalic is the most common because uterus is broad above I can see clearly uterus is 
broad above and it is narrow below so the head needs less space than buttocks so the fetus head will be coming downward and the buttocks as they need more space it will be on the upper side because upper side it is more wide and because of gravity also you know head is more weighted so head will come downward okay so apart from cephalic presentation rest all presentations are mal presentation so you can see here breech is also a mal presentation so what is normally presentation presentation means you know, the fetus which is lying in the uterus in the lower position so most common mal presentation is the most common mal presentation is breech okay so next coming to transverse lie so in transverse lie baby is like this okay in transverse lie this is called transverse lie here actually what uh, presentation you will see is a shoulder presentation you can see this is a shoulder so at the opening of uterus you will see this is a shoulder presentation okay so now in shoulder presentation if you try to drag the hand of the baby it's very bad that the hand may come out body will be inside so to prevent all these things just you will do here cesarean section even for breech you will do cesarean section only for cephalic you will do normal vaginal delivery but in this both conditions you will do a cesarean section whether the baby is alive or dead okay you should do cesarean section because the baby is struck now it's not able to come out so what is the maximum chances of cord prolapse seen with transverse leg what is cord prolapse cord means umbilical cord okay so in everything umbilical cord is present here you can see in cephalic position uh, cord prolapse is not maximum because first head comes here first buttocks comes so cord is back but here you can see the cord can also come out here so cord prolapse is most common in transverse line so most common cord prolapse prolapse okay this is important next if vaginal delivery is attempted there is a chances of hand prolapse already we discussed right hand will come out if you try to do a normal vaginal delivery in transverse line so compound presentation what is compound presentation when two parts of body occupy the lower part of uterus so sometimes what happen for as an example as we discuss uh, now hand presentation like this sometimes what happens is this is uterus here head will come and also some hand will come of the baby okay so this type of presentation is called compound presentation because more than two organs are coming of baby that is head or sometimes with leg head with hand okay so anything can come out so now coming to presenting part what is presenting part the part of uh, let me write the heading presenting part okay presenting part is a part of presentation which lies directly over the internal os like uterus so what part is going to come first that will be here near the internal os okay so it is the first part which is felt on per vaginal examination if you put your hand here you will see it you can easily examine it okay the presenting part depends on whether the head of the baby is flexed or extended okay so if flex flex means like this this is baby part head is like in this direction okay it is flexed head so for example this my hand baby head it is flexed like this okay baby is in this position now this is fully flexed okay or as you can say partially flexed or you can say deflex deflex like this okay or you will say partial extended like this if complete extended like this so think my fist as a hand of a baby okay so flexed like this partially flexed like this okay partial extension like this complete extension like this so let us see in what what position what what you can see mostly so presenting part here first in the case of flexed either fully flexed partially flexed or deflex you will see vertex as the most common presentation because you can see flex like this so here what you will have vertex vertex of the baby okay and coming to partial extension here you will have bro of the baby next coming to complete extension here you will have face of the baby so according to the type of extension uh, there will be the part okay now let us start discussing attitude of fetus so what is this attitude it is a relationship of different part of fetus to each other 
uh, you'll understand this if I give an example. So the most common attitude of fetus, uh, most common attitude of fetus is flexion. Flexion means as we discuss like this. For example, this head. So in this flex position, normally the baby will come. Okay. So the presenting part will depend upon the attitude of fetus. Brow and face are examples of abnormal attitude. So vertex is the. Let me write down here. Vertex is a normal attitude of fetus. Okay, coming to bro and face, they are the abnormal attitude of fetus. Means to get the vertex, the fetus should be flexed. In the flex position, it is normal attitude either in extension or complete or partial extension that is an abnormal attitude of the fetus okay so now coming to denominator what is this denominator denominator the bony point of reference on presenting part which comes in relation to maternal pelvis like now as i said in the case of vertex vertex means when the flexed so what is the point which is uh, you know what is the bony point related to vertex for example you take the bony point related to vertex is occiput right because vertex is between the occiput and the uh, posterior fontanelle right now coming to breech in the breech position the point which you have the denominator point is sacrum right whenever in the breech position and is sacrum because the buttocks are coming down right related to sacrum and in the bro position you have frontal eminence or you can say frontal bone okay next coming to face for the face you have the bony uh, landmark as mentum that is a chin right so this bony landmarks are also important to remember now coming to uh, fetal positions these are very important so let me draw this for example the head of the baby is like this let us start with, with the first position the first position will be here Okay, the head is towards this side okay this is called as LOT that is left uh, left occiput transverse left occiput transverse this is the most common and this is a first position okay so following this position you will have left occiput anterior because what you need to see this is a occiput right it is on the left side it is on transverse side it is uh, this is the occiput it is on left side and it is on anterior side okay next like this this is the head of the baby this is third position this is occiput anterior next coming to this now the baby's head has come towards this side okay so this is the occiput here this is fourth one this is right occiput anterior next this one is head okay this is right occiput transverse next coming to this one this is right occiput posterior and remember this is the on the right side this is the most common one on the left side most common one is left occiput transverse okay on the right side most common is right occiput posterior okay next coming to this position this position is occiput posterior so again from there we will come to left occiput posterior and this is the least common okay so total if you number them 1 2 3 4 5 6 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so total in total there are eight positions among this all eight positions the most common is left occiput transverse next most common is right occiput posterior next least common is left occiput posterior okay so these are the positions which you need to see so from position one to five so you will divide this into position one to five one to five positions all normal vaginal delivery is normal here but in the case of positions 6 to 8 coming to position 6 to 8 in this there the vaginal delivery is occipito posterior 
ओके सो ना कमिंग टू दट इज हॉस्पिटल पोस्टीरियर डिलीवरी नाउ कमिंग टू ऑसिपिटो पोस्टीरियर पोजिशन ऑसिपिटो पोस्टीरियर पोजिशन इज अ मोस्ट कॉमन माल पोजिशन मोस्ट कॉमन माल पोजिशन ओके द मोस्ट कॉमन पोजिशन ऑफ फीटस इज लेफ्ट ऑसिपिटो ट्रांसफर्स ग्रेटर देन लेफ्ट ऑसिपिटो एंटीरियर ओके इन द मोस्ट कॉमन पोजिशन एक्सपेशली ड्यूरिंग दिस लेबर इज लेफ्ट ऑसिपिटो ट्रांसफर्स ग्रेटर देन लेफ्ट ऑसिपिटो एंटीरियर इन द मोस्ट कॉमन ऑसिपिटो एंटीरियर पोजिशन इज लेफ्ट ऑसिपिटो एंटीरियर वॉट इज दिस इज द मोस्ट कॉमन ऑसिपिट एंटीरियर पोजिशन ओके द मोस्ट कॉमन ऑसिपिटो पोस्टीरियर पोजिशन इज राइट ऑसिपिटो पोस्टीरियर द मोस्ट कॉमन पोजिशन इन ब्रीच लेफ्ट सैक्र दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मोस्ट कॉमन पोजिशन इन ब्रीच लेफ्ट सैक्रल एंटीरियर मोस्ट कॉमन पोजिशन इन फेस left mento anterior okay so these are all very important positions so next coming to how to identify positions in image based questions so in image image based questions you have one questions the steps like the first step is find out where the occiput is facing first okay if it is towards pubic symphysis that is anterior right so it is occipital anterior if it is towards sacral promontory then it is occipital posterior if it is between uh, pubic symphysis and sacral promontory then it is occipital transverse okay so this is the first step next coming to second step in the second step we need to find out whether the occiput is facing towards left side or right side in the image if the occiput is towards your left hand side then the right hand side in the mother okay so left hand side it's according to you let me write here you but it is reverse okay in the case of mother so it will be right side in mother next coming to um, leopold maneuver okay about this leopold maneuver let us discuss in another you know another section before that let us discuss some uh, diagrams here this questions okay so if you see this question now how to find out whether this is a uh, what kind of position so if you see here according to me according to this diagram this is on left side but according to the mother it will be on right side right so that's why it is right side and if you see occiput it is anterior so right occipital anterior right next coming to this position uh, see this diagram in this diagram if you see uh, the diamond shape is uh, show representing the you know anterior fontanel this one anterior fontanel this one is posterior fontanel so near the posterior fontanel you will have occiput right so if you see the occiput it is to the near to the uh, you know sacral uh, pubic symphysis right so if you see this is uh, according to me it is now on the right side but according to mother it is left side so left occipital anterior right so like this you need to find out that 